Now, Professor, two new reports have been released. They both bring the subject of superbugs into the spotlight once again. What are they saying? OK, well, two re recently published reports, one by the IFH, the International Scientific Forum for Home Hygiene, and another by Domestos, which is to do with market research. Both relate to superbugs. The, the first one, the IFH one, looks at what are the risks of uh, so-called superbugs that we traditionally associate with hospitals, what's the risk of them uh, causing problems in the home. Uh, the Domestos one concerns about what people know about superbugs, what they feel they don't know, whether they feel vulnerable, do they know someone who's been affected, uh, and so the, the, the two come together in that sense. How bad is the problem of superbugs in the home? And at the moment in the UK, the risk is considered relatively minimal. The problem is that we do know, in uh, certainly in the US, there are far more problems with some of these community strains. And the fear is that what happens in the US today may happen in the UK next year. So what can we do to stop this? OK, what can people do? I mean, basically, it's good infection control practice, be it wherever it is, hospitals or the home starts with good hand hygiene, probably the single most important infection control thing that you can do. Uh, but then it goes on to targeted hygiene, looking at uh, cleaning. And uh, the targeted hygiene there is uh, when we clean, cleaning the most appropriate and, and beneficial times. What do we clean? Uh, people know about things like toilets and, and so on, but hand contact surfaces frequently get forgotten, yet we know 40% of colds and flu can be spread through uh, hand contact surfaces. Uh, chopping boards in the kitchen, um, uh, cleaning, how, how we do cleaning. We know that uh, people will often use a dirty cloth for cleaning. That's not going to get very successful results. What they use for cleaning. Um, there's lots of chemicals out there, often quite expensive with, with long names, but they may not kill the full range of organisms and may not be effective. Antibacterial agents in themselves don't kill viruses, which can be a, a problem. If you take something, a bleach such as Domestos, and we know that kills uh, a wide range of organisms uh, and uh, would handle more than capable of dealing with a lot of the superbugs that are around. Superbugs we know are resistant to antibiotics, but there's not much evidence to suggest they're any more uh, difficult to destroy using disinfectants than uh, the ordinary ones. So what can we do to actually stop the superbugs getting into the home? Well, it's an interesting point how the superbugs get into the home. Um, if we t it's an interesting point with MRSA. Uh, now, we have the hospital-acquired strains of MRSA, and, and we know that they cause problems in hospitals. They can get into the home simply because people get discharged from hospitals and we know that uh, stay in hospitals are shorter now than they used to be. And of course you also get the reverse. We know that people who can be colonised with the MRSA can go into hospital and therefore bring it into that environment. Uh, but there's also evidence now that there are strains of MRSA which are not the hospital strains which have evolved separately within the community and we can distinguish between the two. Uh, what's of some interest is that in the US now, some of these community strains are now starting to take over from the hospital strains. So uh, uh, maybe the terms we use will have to change. Now it's being said that uh, in Britain children are being brought up in almost too sanitised an environment. They're not being exposed to germs enough to build up any kind of natural resistance. Would you agree with this? There's not a, that much practical evidence to support it, and I actually think I have a, a whole range of issues with the hypothesis as such. It's trying to produce too simplistic an answer to what is a fairly complex problem. And the problem was why are uh, 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 allergic reactions more common in children now than they used to be 50 years ago? And this was a, a hypothesis, a little bit of dirt does you good, effectively, to explain it. I don't think I'm not happy about uh, a lot of the aspects of the hypothesis. And I think uh, perhaps it's a factor, but there could be lots of other factors. We now are living in far more diesel around. We're living in a more synthetic materials. It's a different world. Uh, and I think uh, it's, it's likely to be a complex interaction of a whole range of factors. Professor Chris Griffith, thank you very much indeed. Okay, thank you.